Hello everyone and welcome to the Eddie Sutton Show. I'm Dean Blevins and right off the top we want to address the physical condition of a couple of key Cowboys, Coach Eddie Sutton and of course Byron Houston and joining us today on the show is assistant coach Rob Evans. Welcome to the program. Rob, off the top though, uh, the condition of Coach Sutton. Well Dean, uh, the indication we get uh, is that Coach Sutton's doing very well. Uh, of course, uh, a lot of people last night uh, uh, had heard that he had gone to the hospital. Uh, he started feeling uh, a little weak when he went to his press conference. Uh, he came out of the press conference and uh, did the uh, radio call-in show with Tom Dorado and uh, was feeling uh, even, even worse then. So went over and talked to Mrs. Sutton a little bit and, and they decided uh, to, to check with the doctor, local doctor. Uh, after talking to the local doctor, they decided to go to the hospital and have some tests uh, done. He was having uh, some uh, chest pains. So uh, they did and uh, that doctor decided to send him to Tulsa uh, to have some extensive uh, information done, some work done to, to check and see what was going on. So that's where we stand right now. And the word we get uh, from Tulsa today is that he's doing very well. And uh, apparently nothing that medicine cannot cure. Exactly. Uh, uh, the tests that were done, you know, they uh, did an angiogram just to check and make sure the arteries were, were not clogged up. And uh, uh, what they tell us is that uh, uh, there's nothing uh, wrong and that uh, just some medical attention, some medicine will take care of, uh, of, of anything that uh, that they're concerned with. And at this point, we don't know the timing of when Coach Sutton uh, will be back. As far as Byron Houston, he is another key performer, obviously, and Byron goes down in the Oklahoma game with a sprained ankle, the latest on uh, Byron. Well, again, you know, uh, the trainers and the doctors tell us that uh, probably has some strained ligaments uh, in his ankle. He came down, uh, uh, I think, on Saturday last night. Uh, so he, he will be all right, too. Now, when he will be ready to go, we don't know. Uh, he went in, had some, uh, some x-rays done, uh, they have since taken him to Oklahoma City to have some more extensive, uh, to get a second opinion. Uh, so from what we can gather from them that uh, Byron, is, uh, his ligaments are uh, tender, but that he will be ready to go. When that will be, we don't know whether it's going to be the Missouri game or the Nebraska game, but uh, you know, Byron's been an iron horse. And so uh, we look for him to come back uh, very, very soon. And it was a tough spill. We'll have a graphic look at that injury coming up in the highlights. We'll take a break now. When we come back, we'll look at Oklahoma State and Iowa State and Oklahoma State and the Sooners. Stay with us. Welcome back to the program. Before we go to highlights, uh, a brief biography here on Rob Evans. Rob, you were quite a college athlete drafted by three sports professionally. Can you give us uh, 40 years of a life in 30 seconds? Tell us about yourself. I think that's kind of hard to do, but I'll try <laughs> to do the best I can. Uh, basically from New Mexico and uh, played high school ball. and was drafted in three sports, drafted out of high school by the Houston Code 45s. And uh, then I went on and played basketball in junior college at Lubbock Christian College. And, and uh, then on to New Mexico State University uh, and was uh, drafted out of, uh, out of uh, New Mexico State in football uh -huh. by the Oakland Raiders and then also drafted by the uh, Dallas Chaparrales in basketball. But I chose to play football because basically uh, that's where the money was at that time. And uh, was a rookie along with Kenny Stabler and George Atkinson and uh, Eldridge Dick and some of those guys. So had had a good time uh, uh, with those guys. Uh, had a chance to go back and uh, coach in college, uh, which is what I want to do in basketball. So. Uh, that's what I'm doing now. Cowboys, happy to have you. I know Eddie Sutton's philosophy is don't bring in an assistant unless he can be a head coach, so he thinks a lot of you. To the highlights, now you all had played at Colorado. You were on a long road trip, and you head to Ames, Iowa to set up the Iowa State game. Well, it was a long road trip. Uh, I, was, I, I went in and scouted Colorado and Iowa State, so I was going Monday. Uh, but uh, coming out of Colorado, we felt like that uh, uh, we needed to get back on track. We had a team meeting and talked about it. We wanted to get Byron on track early. Uh, and uh, did a good job of that. Byron played awfully well. You can see Sean uh, real relaxed, hitting the jumper, uh, three-pointer. But uh, I thought we were pretty uh, uh, alert for this ball game, a lot more alert than we were at Colorado. Good, nice penetration by Cornell for a dunk by Randy Davis. Really a, a, a funny game in that you all totally dominated the first half, go up by 18 points in Iowa State, which plays very well at home, a top 25 team comes back in the second, but this is first half action here. Exactly, a nice pass here, and Randy Davis does a nice job running the court. I think it's about his 10th, 11th uh, dunk, and nice pass by Sean uh, Sutton. But Randy was playing real well, running the floor. You can see here that Darren's pushing the ball up the floor, and this is where we play best when they're pushing the ball for Nice penetration, nice lead by Cornell Hatchet. Uh, I thought these guys were real alert, uh, didn't play well in the second half. Uh, same thing happened to us down there last year, but they had a nice lead at halftime. Come out second half, we had talked to him about the fact that we needed to go inside like to uh, Bryant Reeves right there. Uh, those guys are doing a nice job of getting open inside, and we got to get the ball to them. Now this is a, nice a factor, pardon me, Coach, this is a factor of uh, 
It's not that Oklahoma State played poorly in the second half. Iowa State's a team that just played lights out and specifically Justice Thigpen. Played real well. They were 24 out of 30 from the field in the second half, which really, if a team's shooting that well on you, you're going to have trouble with them. Uh, I thought we did a pretty good job defending them, but they hit some big shots and Justice Thigpen uh, hit some real big shots. I played against his dad. Uh, his dad played at Weber State, so and his dad was just as good a player as he was. Is that right? Byron Houston again, as you see Coach Sutton on the sideline, only getting in nine minutes in the second half again, foul problems. Well, he, he's been in foul trouble a lot. You know, uh, Byron doesn't know, you know what to do. He, you know, he's a real aggressive player, and they're calling a lot of fouls inside, and uh, it's causing him some problems. But, uh, again, he did play well in this ball game. Here you can see uh, we're kind of in our spread game a little bit. Cornell penetrates here, pitches back out to Darwin, and Darwin hits a tray. You know, uh, Iowa State uh, has, is not, has not been defeated at Iowa State this year, and we thought we had a chance, but we felt like uh, going in, and Sean makes a nice move there, uh, coming out the second half, that we're going to have to play good because they were not going to die. Johnny Orr, victorious in overtime, beating the Cowboys 84-83. to And uh, how about after that ball game, after you had talked before the game, how did the guys respond afterwards? Well, they were really down about that because they felt like they had played well. Uh -huh. uh, you know, we had a lot better than we played at Colorado. We played well, but uh, Iowa State just played a tremendous game. And when you shoot the basketball like they sh shot in the second half, you're going to have trouble beating anybody. And again, it was not our defense because our defense was pretty good. They hit some tough shots. Cowboys head back home where they had won 28 straight at gallagher Iba Arena. Let's go to the highlights where Oklahoma visits gallagher Iba Arena. Of course, uh, in this ball game, uh, I got to work about uh, 8.30 in the morning, I guess it was, and we had uh, some students out there <laughs> getting ready for this ball game. You can see they're pretty juiced up for the game. Uh, we come out, you know, and get the ball inside to Byron, Bryant uh, Reeves and uh, kept it up nicely, and Byron comes in and finishes up the play. Another double-double for Byron Houston. 20 points, 12 rebounds on the night. Two can, it's back-to-back double-doubles for Houston. Comes down, spots up here for the tray on the trailer in the fast break and hits it. Shooting the ball real well from three-point range, Byron is. Uh, you know, he's just doing a good job. Didn't get the guard play you like in the first half. 0 for 9 from your guard. Well, really 0 for 11 because when you add Cornell yeah. in there. True. Uh, you know, just didn't get that. Uh, they played well at Oklahoma. Uh, in this ball game, uh, they were a little bit tentative. Don't know what the problem was, but we didn't get it. But, uh, again, our inside people playing pretty good. Milt Brown hits a nice shot there, a nice flash. Milt's a big uh, physical player, really does well down low, doesn't he? He's starting to play. He and uh, Binky Tripler are starting to play for us, and that's what we're going to need. We're going to need somebody to step up and come off the bench and help us. There's a lob. That's nice Sean lob again. does that well. Sean does a good job of finding those guys, and uh, when he's in the ball game, those guys are real alert for him. And Sean Sutton comes out in the second half and is knocking down trays. He'll knock down four of them in the second half, four of seven on the evening. Also had seven assists, a fine second half, an overall game for Sean Sutton. Nice ball game for him, and when uh, things are kind of stagnant a little bit for us, Sean takes it upon himself to try to get us going and did a good job. Big rebound by Bryant Reeves. We're pushing the ball up the floor uh, and uh, does a good job. Gets it inside. Again, Milt Brown does a good job of pump faking and going up and scoring the basket. Coach, your team put up 21 three-pointers. That's a school record. I believe 19 was the previous record. Is this because teams are packing the zone in? Well, they are. They're zoning us. We've seen some zones, quite a few zones, and we're starting to do a better job of it. Uh, when they zone you like that, you've got to hit outside shots like Corey Williams just hit there. Otherwise, they're just going to continue to pack it in. I know you weren't pleased with everything that your team did last night, but another example, as Iowa State played very well down the stretch, Oklahoma made some big buckets. Well, you know, we're a ranked team. We're ranked eighth right now. We've been ranked as high as second. And when you're ranked, people are going to get used to it for you and come in and play it tougher than they normally do. And that's what we're finding, and we've just got to come up with that. Byron, here is where you see Byron comes down uh, and turns his ankle, comes down on Salye. Sean uh, gets a charge. You can see it in replay here. Great look at it here. Watch Byron Houston in the middle. Number 35 will come down on Salye. He well, comes down. to watch it. Oh, it really does. You can see here where he goes up and comes down on, turns that Woo! left ankle, just rolls that thing. Well, he Real grimaced, pain. He grimaced on the uh, floor in pain for a minute or two before they got him off the court. And one, ch one last chance. Triplet. We got triplet in the game. Triplet's been shooting the ball very well. It doesn't go here. When you get yourself in that position, uh, you know, you got to have shots like that, and it just didn't go. Oklahoma wins at 70 67. Oklahoma State not the only team to be upset last night. In fact, all four games in the Big 8, the upset team, uh, the underdog was a winner. In fact, eight teams in the top 25 were upset. Well, again, you know what you're finding out this time of the year, uh, everybody's trying to get themselves in position for uh, tournament play. And all the teams that are in the lower division are starting to, uh, they're playing a little bit harder than, uh, than they normally would against you. Uh, and I think that's indicative by the eight teams that, uh, that lost. 
Coach, on Thursday, which is today, you all do not practice because of the NCAA required number of hours you can work out. You have Coach Sutton and Byron not available, but uh, today you do not work out anyway. That's exactly right. We don't work out. It, it gives us a chance, uh, of course, with Byron uh, being out, uh, you know, to get, give them some rest. And it gets the guys a chance to get away from basketball. I think it's a good rule uh, that they've instituted. Uh, we generally uh, wouldn't work out today, and we're not working out uh, at all. So. I think they'll come back and be ready to go again tomorrow. All right, we'll visit more with Rob Evans on the Eddie Sutton Show when we continue after this timeout. Stay with us. And Rob, we pick it up late first half at Iowa State. Yeah, nice play there, Sean. One of the best plays in basketball, prettiest plays, is a lob pass and pass. And uh, Sean Sutton again takes off. Randy Davis running the floor real well. Lob to the basket. Randy goes up, slams it home. People look at that and they say, why don't you do it all the time? It's not that easy. It takes a lot of uh, vision on the assist man and some athletic ability by the guy slamming it. Beautiful play. Yeah, Sean uh, does that about as well as anybody I've well, seen. Well, Sean does. Sean's a very good passer uh, and loves to pass. That's one of his great assets. And uh, Randy Davis is, uh, runs the floor well. Very athletic, runs the floor well, nice jumper. And uh, when those two hook up, it's a beautiful play. 30-second break. We'll come back for Coach's Corner. Stay with us. We'll be right back. And welcome back to the program. Time for Coach's Corner. Eddie Sutton not available to be with us today, Rob, but I know a, a, uh, an offense that you're very familiar with is Choke Cowboy is what you call it. So describe that for our viewers, if you will. That's right. Every now and then you'll see me hold up a sign and say Choke Cowboy. And basically what that is, is it's a spread game. And it's when people are really pressuring you real hard. We try to move the uh, offense up uh, at least as high as the free throw line extended, uh, trying to backdoor people, trying to get some easy layups. It's an offense that's not designed to uh, delay the basketball game, but it's designed to score and can try to relieve some of the pressure. Here you can see Corey gets in the middle. Uh, we got everybody above the free throw line. Ball's passed over to, to uh, Sean, and he dribbles out. Uh, we make them come out in there. They're still pressuring us. Uh, we hit, if we can get the ball in the middle right there, uh, hit Byron, you hit Corey right there, and then everybody's back doing back doing both sides. You see Darren back cuts. Easy layup because of the pressure that they're putting on the wing positions. Not a delay game per se. It's, a, it's an offense where you look to score. Well, you know, uh, the Choke Cowboy could be an offense within itself. If people are going to get out and pressure you in, especially like when we played Kansas, uh, the, the defense on both ends were so tough uh, that we had to go to a Choke Cowboy a little bit earlier than we wanted to because we had to relieve some of the pressure. We had to get some back cuts, and you get those back cuts, then that makes them back off, and then you can go ahead and run your offense. But, no, you're trying to score out of Choke Cowboy and out of any spread game. You know, last night's ball game was uh, the winner scored 70 points, the fewest points in the Oklahoma-Oklahoma State rivalry since 84. Uh, the, the road teams in the league have not really done that well. I believe the number is they've won four, they're four and 23. In the, in the Bedlam rivalry, though, you go to Norman and win, and OU comes to OSU and wins. Well, you can never tell what's going to happen in the Bedlam rivalry because, uh, you know, it's, it's almost like you're playing at home. Uh, you know, you got a lot of fans there, but the, but the thing is, uh, generally in the Big 8 Conference, the arenas are so full until the crowd is a factor. A lot of places, a lot of conferences, you don't see that because there's not a lot of crowd. But uh, that's why you don't see a lot of road wins in the conference because the crowd gets enthusiastic. And, and again, the officials get caught up in the, in the enthusiasm sometimes. Uh, and uh, so you don't see a lot of that. But uh, when OU plays Oklahoma State, uh, Anything can happen. All right, we will take a break. When we come back, we'll see standings and we'll also see the schedule and also talk with the coach about a few things coming up in Oklahoma State basketball. Stay with us as the Eddie Sutton Show continues. Welcome back to the program. I'm Dean Blevins along with Rob Evans, and let's take a look at the Big 8 standings where it's really sort of become jumbled of late. Look at all of them in the middle. Coach Kansas still on top, although they lost last night at 7-2 and two in the Big 8, 19-3 overall. It really is jumbled in there, and for the first time, uh, you know, in the middle of the, of the pack, uh, you know, you can never tell what's going to happen. And we got a lot of games left. We got five games still left to go. And even Kansas, uh, you know, is still not out of the woods. They got some places they got to play. We play them. Uh, you know, they got to play Kansas State. And believe me, Kansas State, that's a big rivalry there. Mm -hmm. So you never know what's going to happen there. They go, uh, they get beat last night. So uh, it's going to be a great race. And it's also going to be a great tournament uh, in Kansas City. Yeah, the big eight seeds are so important as to where you actually end up, and so a lot to be decided between now and the end of the season. And uh, that leads us into the schedule. Coach, let's take a look at what's coming up in the big eight conference. Nebraska at Iowa State, Colorado at Oklahoma, Kansas at K-State, that on Saturday, and your big ball game at Missouri on Sunday. I'll tell you, all those ball games are tough ball games, and again, you're going to see some upsets in, in, in some of those ball games there because they're all tough. Nebraska-Iowa State's going to be a tough ball game. And then on Wednesday, Nebraska at Oklahoma State. 
Missouri at Iowa State, Kansas State at Colorado. We were just talking off the air. You believe all big, all of the Big Eight teams will uh, be in postseason play? But I don't think there's any question about it. You know, it's it's the only league I think in the country that's, uh, that's everybody's got a winning record. Uh, Kansas State, uh, you know, has a chance to, uh, to win some more ball games. And if they can win two or three more ball games, they're going to be in NC two, going to be in the NIT at least. Uh, uh, I think we'll have six teams at least in the NC2A playoffs, so I think all the teams in the Big 8 has got a chance to play postseason. Okay, Coach, tough question. Where did the term Cagers uh, derive? Where did it start? Well, I, I think that, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, it derived from uh, the cages that were around uh, the basketball courts a uh, long time ago. Am I correct? Okay, we will sh soon find out. Uh, if you've been watching our program throughout the year, you've enjoyed the history of basketball, and we'll see if Coach Evans is right. The uh, term cagers. This is the story of cagers. Smart coach. Good well, job. I, I didn't see it either. I've <laughs> heard that before someplace. All right, coach. Let's not leave this on a down note. The Cowboys have a lot to play for. You're in the middle of a great season. This just happens to be the part of the season that's down. Tell well, us the good exactly, news. Hey, let me tell you, that's exactly right. You know, it's a long season. We started out in preseason in IT and did a tremendous job there. We've won a lot of big ball games. Uh, in college basketball, you're going to have peaks and valleys. You know, these are uh, 18, 19, 20 year old kids. Uh, you know, and the thing that uh, we need to do, we need to win a ball game. We win a ball game, uh, then we get up on a positive note. Guys get a little bit more confidence. Uh, we're trying to jockey for position. We're trying to get seated in the NC2A tournament. Uh, we know we're in the NC2A tournament. So uh, we're just trying to get our basketball team where it's fluid again, where it's flowing again. And I think just, uh, you know, a, a couple of days work uh, and then get a chance to play some, some people again. Uh, it'll be a lot more relaxed now. You know, a lot of pressure's off these guys. They've been had a lot of pressure for a long time, being ranked uh, number two and, right. and, and different things. So I think that uh, this basketball team is a very, very good basketball team. You don't win as many games they won without being uh, a tremendous basketball team. How do you coach the confidence? The team is not quite playing with the top confidence that it did before, shooting under 40% for the last five. How do you address that with the squad? Well, we talk individually with them uh, to let them know that we've still got confidence in them. I think it starts with the coaches. Uh, we've got a lot of confidence in these guys. We've got a senior ball club. These guys have a lot to draw on. You know, they've won a lot of big ball games. Uh, you know, again, uh, you know, they, they're in a down uh, turn right now. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is we know what we've got to do to get going again. These guys know. They know they're a very good basketball team. We need a win, and we'll get going again. Coach, less than a minute, Eddie Sutton, a super successful coach. What makes him so successful? Well, because uh, the bottom line is he doesn't deal in negatives. He deals in positive. Uh, he takes care of all the details. Uh, he distributes uh, uh, things to us for us to do, lets, mm -hmm. us, lets his coaches coach, uh, and I think that's a big thing. I think that he's got a lot of experience when dealing with people. He knows how to deal with people. He knows how to get through to, uh, to young men. Uh, he's just a positive individual, and uh, we're all, I think, uh, not only the coaching staff, but the people in Stillwater and Oklahoma State fans are fortunate to have him. And you're exactly right. Rob, thanks. Great job. You bet. Thank you. Coach Sutton, get well. For Rob Evans, I'm Dean Blevins. Thanks for watching this week's Eddie Sutton Show.